often art proves to be very durable and survives the tyranny. But writers don't necessarily survive. You know, the poet Ovid was, was exiled by Caesar Augustus um, to the shores of the Black Sea and never allowed to return to Rome and his life was ruined. He spent much of his life begging to be allowed to return to Rome and he never was. The poetry of Ovid has outlasted the Roman Empire. The poet Mandelstam was killed by Stalin. The poetry of Mandelstam has outlasted the Soviet Union. The poet Lorca was murdered by the goons of, of Franco's Falange in Spain. The poetry of Lorca has outlasted the dictatorship of Franco. But the writers are dead. So the question here is not whether literature can survive tyranny, but whether writers can. Writers are much more vulnerable than ideas. There's a great line in Friedrich Dürrenmatt's play, The Physicists, where one of the characters says, what has once been thought cannot be unthought. And that is true. Once an idea has been released into the world, its power and dur durability is very great. Writers are much weaker creatures than the ideas they unleash. So the question is, how can imaginative artists continue to tell the stories of their, of their world without being assaulted and uh, in some, well, you know, jailed, tortured, in some cases killed. But this is unfortunately not something that's going away. It's going on and on everywhere in the world uh, in secular ty tyrannies as well as religious tyrannies. Um, and it seems to me why it's important to restate what is so valuable about this kind of art, but the art of the novel, which is very low tech. You know, sometimes I think the higher the technological investment in a work of art, the less courageous it is. It costs a lot to make a movie. Nothing radical is ever said in a film anymore. It costs quite a lot to make a television program or to put on a play, and you need all this stuff. You need theaters. You know, you need, uh, you need a, a, a whole apparatus of stuff to put on one of these works, and as a result, they can be stopped very easily because there's a place to go and attack. A novel requires a piece of paper and a pencil and a room, but actually even the room's not essential. Um, that makes it unstoppable. And it is one of the reasons why prose literature, the novel, the poem, has been historically and still is at the forefront of opposition to tyranny um, because the novel belongs to nobody. Nobody owns the novelist's vision except the novelist. 